welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 271. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast about mostly knitting, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York where I'm from and I live with my husband Dennis and our adorable cat Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. So just a couple of administrative details before I get into what I've been making this week. Uh, if you would like to follow me on social media, I am at Villainfine on Instagram where I'm most active and you can follow me on Ravelry if you want to follow my makes, my projects, mainly knitting. Uh, I'm Villainfine on Ravelry as well. Uh, and if you haven't already, please feel free to join the Yarngasm Ravelry group and that is a place to be to chat about this podcast, previous podcasts, ask questions, share your projects, join in our make-alongs, knit-alongs, and giveaways that happen on the podcast occasionally. So uh, right now we have a box of socks knit-along and the year of the garment knit-along that is a whole year-long knit-along, both two separate knit-alongs. So if socks are your jam, join the box of socks knit-along. If <laughs> knitting garments are your jam this year, uh, it's a super casual knit-along, no real rules or regulations other than knit garments. Knit as many or as little as you like. So uh, that is underway at the moment. Uh, but yeah, just a really fun place to be if you want to chat about all things Yarngasm. And if you are into knitting and sewing and making all the things, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, uh, feel free to subscribe to this podcast. I record an episode every single week. I try to up do my best to upload every Thursday, if not Friday. Uh, so. I would love to have you along for the ride. So join in, hit the subscribe button. It's, oh, it's there, it's there. I'm getting good at this, you guys. The subscribe button is right there. So click that if you want to get notified anytime I upload a new podcast to the YouTubes. Um, okay, so enough uh, administrative banter. Um, yeah, let me get into what I've been making this week. I have been pretty monogamously working or knitting away on my um, Curious Handmade MCAL, uh, the Impressionist's Mystery Knit Along that's, that's now ended, um, so I'm still playing a bit of catch up. Um, so no spoilers, if you've been following the MCAL, you've probably seen a lot of spoilers by now, so, but if you still would not like to see, you know, I'll let you know when to avert your eyes. Um, but other than that, I have been working away on my new shawl design, which I'm not going to talk about right now, but I'm very excited about it and just have been knitting, knitting, knitting away on it. So, um, but I will hopefully have something to share with you in, oh, I, I hope two or three weeks. Um, fingers crossed if it all goes to plan, but I've been doing quite a bit of ripping out and restarting of the pro of the project. Um, I'm still a fairly new designer, if that makes any sense, uh, you know, so I'm still trying to find my, my creative process. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm making it work and I'm having fun going along with the flow and just discovering that whatever that process is. But anyway, um, <laughs> enough about that. Let's talk about the MCAL, uh, because I'm loving every stitch of it. I have seen the spoiler, so I'm, if you follow me, I, it's like, I just, I don't like surprises very often. Um, you know, and I held out for as long as I could. And then I was like, all right, what does this look like? What is this going to look like at the end? And I did take a peek at the final finished object and oh my gosh, I'm, I'm even more excited about it, you guys. Um, so yeah, even though I spoiled the surprise for myself, I am still happily knitting along on this like whenever I have time. Um, but <laughs> I'm still on clue three, this is crazy. Um, granted, there are close to 500 stitches on the needles at this point, but anyway, um, yeah. And I already started the next row, so I'm kind of technically mid-row right now, but I'm very badly today, guys. Bear with me. But anyway, here is where I am. It's a crescent shaped shawl. So I love, love, love crescent shaped shawls. I love the way that they fit and drape and yeah. So very happy that it is a crescent shaped shawl. Um, and yeah, here is where I am. This movie speckled pink color right here is my curious colorway. Um, and this color right here is my solstice colorway and this purpley navy blue uh, movie color is uh, my thaw colorway and uh, I actually dyed this yarn in collaboration with Helen Stewart for the mystery knit along um, so I will I, I will talk more about it in shop update but I will be offering more of these colors in the next update on this Saturday um, and there's honking happening outside my window as usual um, 
So yeah, really, really enjoying it. It's pretty much smooth sailing at this point. This section right here, this la beautiful uh, lace section, I don't know why, but it, it reminds me of mermaid tails. It's so pretty and ah, I have a progress keeper. Um, this is a progress keeper that my wonderful friend Hannah of uh, the Crafty Chat podcast and the Corner of Craft uh, so kindly gifted me at uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival, not this year, but the previous year when I went. Uh, we had met in person for the first time and she was just so sweet and gifted me this adorable unicorn <laughs> because she knows, she knows I love unicorns. So um, yeah, it's been keeping me company while I knit on this. Um, so what was I talking about? Okay, so it's pretty much smooth sailing from here. It's all just, guard, from what I gather, it's all just garter stitch, garter stitch, and then a bind off. So, uh, or a pico bind off, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I, you know, I can just power through the rest of this pattern. And finally, hopefully by the uh, end of the weekend, I will have a finished shawl and a finished object to show you next week. So Again, really, really enjoying this, and I, it's also been so fun to kept, uh, keep up with um, other color combinations. Uh, if you click on the uh, projects uh, on the Impressionist MCAL project page, um, you can see everyone who partook in the in the MCAL, like all their different color choices, colorway choices, and everything. It's just it was just so fun to be a part of. So anyway, Helen, thank you so much for including me in this collaboration. It was just you know the whole ride was amazing so thank you so much um and i what else did i want to say about this yes oh yeah if <laughs> if you follow me on instagram you might be aware that i had a little um snafu uh when it came to my knitting needles so i a while back i purchased the Lika needle set uh it's i believe sizes it's the Lika interchangeable needle set i believe it goes from us size 2 all the way up to us size 10 um and when I bought these needles, I thought that they were the cat's pajamas. Uh, they are, I, I am not gonna lie, they are beautiful, they're very photogenic, and I, when they work, I do enjoy using them. However, I ran into several, um, several snafus with these needles, and uh, so, I, I, granted, I should have contacted uh, customer service from the get-go, a while back I should have done it, but um, after the after the third after the third mishap with this needle set, I was like, okay, that's the last straw. I have to contact them um, because it, a needle set should not run into this many issues. Um, so the first one I will say was that the screws on some of the cables, the the needles themselves were fine, but uh, some of the cables weren't uh, screwing into the needles. So that was number one. I was like. Because I'm I, I'm notoriously lazy when it comes to these things. I, I don't want to have to write to customer service, but you know when driven. Um, so yeah, that was the first run in that I had with the needles. The second one is that on my US size four, the wooden part of the needle popped out of the socket. So I had to crazy glue. Like you shouldn't have to do that. So I crazy glued it back in. It's fine. It works perfectly at this point. Um, and then while I was knitting on this. Uh, I was like mid row. Thankfully, it was a stockinette row, and uh, the the cable. You can see these are carbons, by the way. These aren't lukas. Uh, so just full disclosure. Uh, I mean, this is not the lika needle set. This is a different needle altogether. Um, different brand of needle altogether. Uh, so this part right here, the the cable came out of the metal part. So. <sighs> That was not fun, having to pick up and save uh, close to 500 stitches. And yeah, as I mentioned, that was the last straw. I contact, a lot of you, thank you by the way, um, in the past have said, you know, contact uh, Lika. They will, you know, they have great customer service and they will send you a replacement. Um, so I, I should have, again, I should have heeded that advice earlier in the game, but um, <laughs> it, it, it took until, uh, this happened for me to actually motivate myself to go onto the website and complain. So as you guys have mentioned, uh, they do have a great customer service policy. You fill out a form, let them know what you need replacing, what happened, um, and then uh, within a day they contacted me back saying that they're just going to send out a replacement and yeah, so excellent customer service policy, but at the same time, uh, I've noticed like a lot, I've heard a lot of other knitters had issues with the, uh, the look and needle set and 
and I keep holding these needles up. These are not Lickas. These are Knitter's Pride Carbons. Um, so just FYI, don't get confused. Uh, Lickas, I don't have them on me. I'll try and insert a photo of them here, but they are beautiful driftwood needles and they're all the rage right now. Again, when they work, they knit beautifully. Um, I really enjoy my fixed uh, circulars that I have by them. Uh, but again, like I've heard a lot of tales of woe from other knitters that, you know, they've experienced similar issues. And, and while they do have a good customer service policy, still, it should not be, the, like that should not be the case. But anyway, them's the breaks, you live and you learn, and yeah. So what else did I want to say about this project? Um, yeah, I did take some time yesterday to sit down and weave in some ends. Uh, I do not dislike weaving in ends. It's a necessary evil, but I don't mind it. It doesn't, it's not something that I dread or anything. It's just part of the game, you know? It's like, okay, I've, I've got to weave in some ends, pop on a podcast. Doodly 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 doo. So anyway, uh, I did take some time out yesterday to do that. Uh, I still haven't finished, but there are quite a lot of ends that I've got to weave in. Uh, so yeah, um, I, again, a lot of you are, I know like some knitters are not fans of weaving in ends. So just be aware, there are quite a few ends to weave in, but nothing, nothing too difficult that, you know, you can't bang out in like 15 minutes. But anyway, um, yeah, otherwise that is pretty much all I want to say about that. Um, so yeah, that has been living in right now in my hazel pink hazel project bag that I got at Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year and I I love this project bag you guys. It is so well made. I I wrote poetry about it on a previous episode. <laughs> I wrote poetry. I wax poet. There you go. I wax poetic about it on a previous episode, but um I'm really loving this bag again. I want to get another one of her project bags because yeah they're just they're really great um so anyway yes that is all i want to say about that so anyway okay i think that is it for sadly that is it for sewing content this week and i have no weaving no rabbit holes to share with you this week um i have not made any progress on my weaving that i shared with you last time uh although uh, hopefully this weekend or at some point i will have some time to just kind of shuttle back and forth for a little bit um but right now i just need something a little bit more i don't know stimulating if that makes any sense not that weaving is not stimulating it is i love seeing how the colors play with each other i'm looking at my loom on my table right now so um yeah, I th I'm, I'm definitely going to sit down and spend some time with it hopefully this weekend. Um, but yeah, again, it's just so fun to see how different colors play together in a woven form compared to a knitted form. Um, but yeah, more on that on another episode. I am going to move along to sewing uh, because I do have some sewing content to share with you. And yeah, you are looking at a handmade object. This is an older handmade object. Um, handmade object. A handmade sewn garment. But yes, this is the Lonsdale dress by Sewaholic Patterns. And I sewed this, I have to say, this was one of the first handmade objects that I, that has been getting, that I've made, that has been getting a lot of wear, uh, especially during summer months. As you can tell, it's very summery uh, by the the neckline. I've got to do that sometimes, but that's nothing, no big deal. Um, but yeah, again, this is the Lawn Sale Dress by Sewaholic Patterns and such a pleasure to make. It was really quick to whip up. Uh, it does require a, quite a bit of yardage. I want to say four yards, if I'm not mistaken, but um, I guess I will stand up and show it to you. Uh, yeah, I made this, I wanna say about two years ago and I wore it all throughout last summer and it kept me nice and cool and it has like this, <laughs> I don't know why, like I love this detail. It's just, it ties. So, okay, um, the neck, uh, these straps tie in the front and then they go all the way to the back and then you have like these loops in the back of the dress and then it comes through the loops and then you just tie a little floppy bow tie behind and I think it is so adorable. So uh, it doesn't really, uh, cardigans don't really go well over it because you get this kind of weird bump in the back, but for a really hot summer day, this is like my go-to dress that I wear all the time. Uh, the fabric is a little thinner than what, I, again, I was still learning. So the fabric is uh, cotton lawn. It's, it's pretty thin. Um, so I do have to wear a slip under it because you get that <laughs> see-through effect <laughs> happening. So yeah, a slip is definitely required under this. Um, but otherwise I, I really, really, I love this dress so much. And it, also bonus pockets. Um, and if you are familiar with Sewaholic patterns, the, oh goodness, what is that pattern? The skirt is essentially the same 
um, pattern as the KT from Inside Number 23 did a knit along. I'll pop it in the down bar, but I've made two of those uh, skirts, uh, but it's the same exact construction and everything. Uh, the Lonsdale just is a full dress using that construction of the skirt plus the top. So pretty genius. The pockets are really fun, I have to say, to construct. Um, so yeah, it's as you're putting it when I was putting it together, I'm like, how is this going to turn into a pocket? But sure enough, it all came together. Uh, and, and that's like another thing. It's like when you're learning to sew, so you have to take, you know, sewing step, step by step by step. You can't like freak out over the whole picture. I mean, yeah, it's good to look at the whole picture. Um, but when it comes to actually sewing a garment for the first time, it's just, you got to take things one step at a time. Cue shooting star, the more, you know. So anyway, um, yeah, this is, I, I, again, one of my favorite outfits of the summer to wear. Um, and that brings me to me made May. Uh, and yeah, that is a hashtag that's, uh, and a Instagram hashtag that's currently going around. Uh, and I've been wanting to partake in this for so long. Uh, I first heard about it through Isabel from Fluffy Fibers, who I feel like I've been mentioning every single podcast <laughs> since I got back from Edinburgh because she's awesome. I love her. Um, I love you, Isabel. <laughs> so, but yeah, she, um, I first heard, got wind of, uh, hashtag me made may from her because she started pod, um, posting about it on her Instagram feed three years ago and I've been wanting to partake in it. However, being a newbie sewist, I really, it's it sounds so silly, but like I felt like I didn't have enough handmade garments to write, you know, like technically write home about or brag about. The idea is to post on Instagram using hashtag me made may, um, a, a garment that you've made, that you've sewn yourself or knitted, any handmade garment, uh, you know, either a photo of you wearing it or um, making it. And, you know, at the same time, I was like, I don't have enough handmade garments or anything that I've made. A lot of the things I have to say that I first sewed uh, on my sewing machine, like, I, it, great learning experiences, but at the same time, they did not get a lot of work because either the print really wasn't quite me or the fit, the sizing wasn't correct or, you know, again, I was like still learning. And I have to say a lot of those garments I ended up donating um, because yeah, I, they would have not have been worn at all. And I, you know, well, they were wearable. They were wearable garments, just not quite for me. So surely somewhere out there, there is somebody that is enjoying them at this moment. So anyway, <laughs> um, I donated them and hopefully they're off to better homes. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I feel like this year I, I have enough garments under my belt to be like, look what I made <laughs> and I actually wear them. So, uh, yeah, I hope that makes sense. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy to be participating in that. And I've been actually posting them as Instagram stories because I'm trying to get better at doing Instagram stories on Instagram. I'm having a lot of fun with that. Uh, and I'm saving them to a collection of Instagram stories on my Instagram feed. So you can, you know, I'll keep them there for a little bit after, um, you made me, but I'm trying not, I might not post about it every day, but, um, you know, every other day or something, I'll try and post a little bit about, um, something I've made or, you know, that I'm wearing or I'm currently making. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so yeah, Lonsdale dress, highly recommend this pattern. Great for beginners and it's super cute. So, uh, yeah. And then I'm also currently working on another dress. I started a muslin. I have not finished it yet. Not enough hours in the day. Um, but I am currently working on this pattern right here, which is very easy Vogue V9100. And I think this was a pattern that Jacqueline Salem from the Brooklyn Knitbook podcast had made at some point. But yeah, just a simple, simple princess seam um, gathered skirt dress. Can't have too many of these guys. I, I live in these. So again, like I live in my... Um, during the winter mainly, I live in my lady skater dresses over a pair of leggings and boots. Uh, and summers, I love my gathered skirts. So, you know, working on a muslin. However, um, I don't have it to show you right now because it's upstairs. I only have the bodice sewn together, but um, it's currently in muslin phase. Uh, however, I'm using fabric that I really actually like. So, um, or it's, you know, I thought, I. I was over it. I wasn't, you know, crazy about it after a couple of years of just kind of sitting there languishing in my stash. I'm like, all right, this is going to be a muslin fabric. However, now that it's coming together, if the dress fits and fits correctly, I'm probably going to wear it a lot. So I'm um, very happy the way that worked out uh, or is working out. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. But um, yeah, so there's that. 
So because content is quite sparse this week, I am going to pull some questions from the Ask Away thread, which is a thread in the Yarngasm Ravelry group where you can go to ask me pretty much anything of or relating to the podcast, my life within reason, and just pretty much anything. So uh, just bear in mind that I may have revised some of these questions to flow a little bit more smoothly and, you know, just bring them in so they're not so lengthy uh, when I talk about them on the podcast, so just bear in mind. Uh, but the first question is from Sarah, who is Sarah B. Clever on Ravelry, and she asks, I have seen you make a lot of Gertie dresses and other patterns from the big five companies, and I am very inspired, but I've heard these patterns are designed with way too much ease. I'm wondering if you find this to be the case, or does it come down to personal preference? I've mainly used patterns from indie companies like Named and Grainline and Sewaholic, so have you really... So I haven't really tried these big pattern companies, but I have a few pieces traced out. So, okay, um, by big five companies, that includes uh, like Butterick, it includes Vogue patterns, it includes Simplicity, all those big brand companies that you can easily find at a craft store like Joann's or Michael, or mainly Joann's or any fabric, um, big box fabric store. Um, and yeah, very easy Vogue counts as one of those big five companies. So when it comes to sewing a big five pattern piece, uh, it would make perfect sense to look at the back of the, the pattern and find your size and cut out pattern pieces for that size and sew the pattern and it will fit you, right? Perfect sense. However, that's not the case when it comes to sewing big five patterns. You can't go by the measurements on the back of the envelope. Uh, what you really have to do is pull out the entire pattern and find the finished garment sizes on the pattern pieces themselves. A lot of times you'll find the finished garment measurements printed on the bodice pattern pieces or the, the, um, the bottom pattern pieces. And yeah, you wanna look for those those measurements and go by that and cut out that size for yourself. So even with that, you still wanna make a muslin. Uh, Cause I know I am a, I have a very small bust, I'm a 32. So a lot of the times these big five patterns only, their, their smallest size are usually a 33, 33 and a half. So I have to do some adjusting there as well. Um, and the waist is sometimes like a either 20, um, sometimes a 26 to a 28. So I'll have to do some truing up. Um, by truing up, I mean, you know, connecting the lines from a, a size six bust to a size eight waist. Uh, so, you know, just bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, the key thing is to, the key is to look at those finished garment measurements and cut out um, the pattern pieces according to those measurements, not the back of the envelope. So I hope that answers your question. Um, a lot of indie designers such as Grainline and um, Sewaholic, like these patterns, they're more modern patterns. They're designed by indie dyers, not big box, um, big brand companies. So they they take a lot of, um, si they take the sizing into consideration, you know, and they make, and, and they make it more intuitive, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I mean, even on the back, they don't even mention what the finished bust size is or what the finished waist size is. They just tell you the width to the lower edge or the back length from the base of the neck to the base of neck to the back. It's like, how does that help me? So how does that help you? But yeah, so anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, and I will move along to the next question, which is from Dixie, who is, uh, does Z72 on Ravelry, and she asks, uh, when you have repeated sewing patterns, are you printing a new pattern every time for PDF versions, or have you taken the time to cut the patterns out of contact paper or something a little more hardy? So, okay, a lot of the times now you can actually download PDF versions of a pattern and print all those pieces, all those uh, pages out, tape them together like a puzzle, and then cut them, cut out the pattern pieces uh, using printer paper. So the way I do it is I just download the PDF pattern, print it all out, put them together, tape them together like a puzzle, and then cut them out, and then that, I, that's it. I just, you know, store them in a zip, a big Ziploc bag, and then the next time I want to reuse them, I just pull them out of the Ziploc bag, and I find that that keeps them intact. However, um, you can certainly use uh, ice box, what is it, um, Icebox paper, I believe it's called. I have a lot of that when I, I use ice paper when, or ice box paper when I trace patterns from books like uh, Gertie's book. Um, so that comes in handy. And then there's craft paper that you can use. But for me, it's just, I know I'm the only one using it. 
I just keep them printed out on the printer paper that I print them out from. So, uh, but yeah, you can certainly use other uh, materials as well. So, um, and I will say, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, I love the fact that the PDF patterns make all these patterns so much more accessible and, inst you know, like an instant download. You don't have to go to a store and purchase them. However, there is a part of me that finds it incredibly wasteful printing out all those pages because the, you know, um, yeah, it is a lot of paper waste, but you know, recycling, that's what recycling's for. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I hope that answers your question. So that said, I'm going to move along to shop update, uh, because I'm having an international friendly shop update this Saturday, uh, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th <laughs> at uh, 10 AM Eastern time. And I hope you can make it. Um, and by international friendly, I mean uh, a shop update that anyone can shop. It's just at a different time. So people who either live in Australia or anywhere else around the world who can't ma usually make my shop normal shop updates on Fridays at seven uh, have another opportunity to shop my updates. So uh, yeah, let me go get the yarn that I will have in the shop for you. Okay, so last week I announced uh, two new yarn bases. So we have Ghost Lace and Infinite Lace. And thank you so much to everybody who came to that update. Uh, it, a lot of you sounded really excited uh, that I started dyeing lace for the shop. So I am excited. I've had uh, so much fun seeing how the bases take all of my different colorways that I have. Um, so that's always exciting. But uh, yeah, I have uh, some quite a few colors to share with you this week. So I took a little bit of a break from dyeing uh, mystery knit along kits uh, from the Impressionist Semcal. I dyed three colorways for the kits, uh, Solstice, Thaw, and Curious. And I just took a little bit of a break just because I was dyeing them every single week and I kind of wanted to get some other colorways in there that I haven't dyed in a while, um, especially some of my spring colorways. But uh, this week I will be dyeing up some more um, impressionist MCAL uh, kit colors uh, and selling them as in individual skeins. So if you were experiencing FOMO from, <laughs> uh, you know, if you were keeping up with the knit along and wishing you had jumped in on the bandwagon or want, still want to knit the shawl, um, you have some uh, another opportunity to get your mitts on some uh, of those colors uh, in the Saturday's update. So, um, but I also dyed them on some of the new bases as well. So here you can see what they look like. Um, but this is Curious. So here it is on Infinite Lace, which is my 100% uh, Superwatch BFL, Blue Face Luster Base. And here it is on Ghost Lace, which is um, Kid Mohair and Silk. And yeah, really awesome to like hold together with other yarns to create like a really cool textured effect. Um, so there will be that. And then I will have Solstice. Here it is again on Ghost Lace and Infinite Lace. Um, so yeah, I really like the way that these, these died up. Um, so yeah, there's that. And here's Thaw. So here it is on Ghost Lace, and then here it is on Nouveau. And don't look at my nails, you guys. I really need to get myself manicured. This is ridiculous. It's already like, I'm like, yeah. Anyway, I need to take out some time to do my nails. So don't judge. Don't judge. Um, anyway, uh, I also dyed up some Lost Unicorn. So here it is on Ghost Lace and Infinite Lace. These came out really fun. Uh, there's that. And then I dyed up a Strange Brew, which I'm kind of liking. I don't know. I didn't write down the formula, but I remember what I did. But let me know what you think. Because lately I've been obsessed with Bergamot, the scent, which sound, this is going to sound really bizarre, but for some reason I love the smell of bergamot and i just got back into drinking green uh not green tea um earl gray tea because it's it has some notes of bergamot in it and it smells delicious and i'm just i'm obsessed with the smell of bergamot so <laughs> i was like how cool it would be to dye up a an earl gray colorway so anyway i dyed up some earl gray um and this is yeah, it's it's meant to be a strange brew, but let me know what you guys think. I might make it a regular, but it's just like a navy, like earl grayish color with like flecks of or like bright orange and browns in there. Um, so yeah, if you're not familiar, bergamot is a a citrus, so it's like it's very close to an orange or a lemon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, anytime I see like a package of earl grey tea or something, there's always like this really lovely like grayish blue and um an orange peel if that makes any sense so anyway 
we'll see. I don't know, I love it, but um, yeah, I haven't decided yet. Let me know what you think. Oh, oh, another strange brew. Did not write down the formula for this, but here it is on Infinite Lace. Yeah, this cannot be repeated at all. And speaking of Strange Brews, the first installment of the Strange Brew Yarn Club will be shipping not this coming week, but the following week. This month has been a little crazy, but trust me, it's they're going to be shipping out very soon. So uh, thank you for your patience, and I hope you love the colorway set. I'm going to be dying up for that. So, uh, but if, if you are curious, uh, everyone is getting the same colorway. It's just across the board. Um, no one's getting different colorways. They're all getting the same. They're all just going to be Strange Brew colorways that are non-repeatable. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, the other exciting news that I have to share with you is that I'm doing another collaboration with uh, Helen Stewart. So yeah, if you thought the MCAL was the end of it, no, my friends, there's another uh, collaboration that is coming down the pike. Um, if you are not familiar, Helen is currently doing the uh, Curious Handmade Sock Society. So she's releasing um, several sock patterns um, for, I think, one sock sock pattern a month. So Helen asked if I would also like to dye some yarn for that, for one of the patterns that she's going to include in the Sock Society collection. So could not say no to that. So I um, came up with another colorway for uh, the sock pattern, which is going to be published. The, the sock pattern that she designed using uh, Volenvine yarns is coming out on uh, June 4th. So she gave me a heads up and I'm going to be dyeing um, this colorway. Uh, starting this week all the way leading up to June 4th for the um, the pattern release. So it's a very, very delicate pinky mauve color uh, with very subtle flecks of, you know, like moss greens and um, I can't really describe it, but yeah, just very, very, very delicately speckled. Uh, and I'm calling this colorway Tiptoe. So yeah. I hope you guys like it. So yeah, I will be making this color available uh, in the shop this Saturday and the weeks leading up to um, the pattern release on June 4th. So yay, Can, so excited about that. And um, you know, I, I got a sneak peek of the pattern and it is beautiful. So anyway, I hope you guys are excited for that. Um, so yeah, there is that. And then I think I'm gonna move along to, what is it, what is it? Blather, the blather segment, where I talk about what's been happening in my life should you care to stick around. So as I mentioned, I just took a little tea break um, and living in my, living, does tea actually live in a cup? I guess, I guess so. But the tea currently living in this amazing sock monkey mug gifted to me by my good friend Nina of the This Old Knit podcast. I think she gifted this to me for either Christmas or my birthday. I think it was Christmas, but anyway, love this mug. It is huge and has like these awesome, awesome ear handles. Love it. Um, but as I mentioned, I am obsessed with bergamot for some reason. I have no idea why. I don't question my madness anymore, but, uh, yeah, bergamot. Um, and if you know, if you follow the podcast, uh, I am not a fan of black teas. Uh, they, for some reason, upset my stomach, especially if I don't have any food in it. Uh, I tend, black teas, I think it has to do with the acidity, but it makes me a little nauseous. So, um... But I, I do love Earl Grey tea, and it, I was kind of bummed that I couldn't have it because I really enjoy the smell of it. Um, so I actually was browsing David's tea, and because it was, it was time for a restock, I was running low, and I noticed that they had a, a rooibos version of Earl Grey tea, and um, it's non, it has no caffeine in it. It's organic, and it, it's, it's pretty much the same thing as regular black Earl Grey tea. Uh, it tastes amazing and I can't even tell the difference, except, you know, I know I noticed it doesn't have that acidity in it, which is amazing. So highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, that's that, that was quite the tea tangent, but that's what's in my, my teacup today. So um, as far as what else is happening, <gasps> you guys, <laughs> A Court of Frost and Starlight came out on May 1st. Um, yeah, and if you know me, I am obsessed with the Akotar series, A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Maas. And I have been waiting so long for this to come out. And I know a lot of you who follow the podcast were excited for it too. Um, but it came out and I have been listening to the audiobook and I don't know. I'm not gonna say I love it. I don't I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, but um 
yeah, it's just been, it's, I think it's kind of going to be one of those books. It's a novella. It's a lot shorter than the previous books in the series. It's, um, I know the previous books have been somewhere between like, the audiobooks, I should say, have been between like 20 to 24 hours long in length. Uh, this audiobook is only six hours long. So yeah, really short, really quick listen to read. I have maybe about like an hour and a half left to listen to it. So, um, it's a lot of character development, a lot of, um, story build up and backstory and uh you know there there are things happening it's very well written and i have been enjoying it but i have you know i feel like there's going to be a cliffhanger at the end and what i really love about this this novella is that it's technically kind of like her holiday or you know christmas book basically except they don't call it christmas or you know the holidays they call it solstice so the winter solstice they're celebrating the winter solstice which is their holiday celebration you want to call it um which i thought was brilliant so you know there's a lot of gift buying and you know decorating and stuff stuff like that happening um so i'm really enjoying that aspect of it and uh you know but yeah there is again a lot of character development and all that all that good juicy stuff so anyway um i've been having fun listening to that uh yeah so highly recommend it highly recommend it if you are a fan of the series uh if you are new to the series i definitely recommend starting with book one <laughs> so otherwise you're gonna be totally lost in like what the heck is happening so um but yeah, really enjoying that, and I want to see what else did I have to talk about. But yeah, other than that, it's been delightfully warm here. Uh, I am a huge fan of warm weather. Call me crazy, but uh, I, I really, really do enjoy being outdoors. I don't enjoy bundling up. Like I love wearing, I love sweater weather. I love sweater weather. Um, hence knitting and wearing warm and woolly things. Uh, however, when it gets really cold and you have to just bundle up every time you go out, I, I don't like that. I like. I like being free outside so anyway if that makes any sense so anyway um yeah it's been really warm here it's been in the upper 80s which is crazy crazy i took some really i took some time out yesterday to sit on my deck and get some knitting in take in some sun if you can believe it i although i did sit in the shade uh, i would never sit directly out in the sun if i could help it so um yeah that was a lot of fun um and yeah enjoyable so I think that is it for this week, guys. Uh, so thank you, so thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe below. Uh, and, you know, you'll get notified anytime I upload a new episode uh, every week on Thursdays. So, yay! Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye. Ba -da -da -ba.